Hello everyone, Dr. Alex Vasquez here with a quick video on this JAMA commentary which was recently published on April 18th, 2018, another nail in the coffin for fish oil supplements. JAMA has been publishing a blitzkrieg of anti-nutrition articles this year and of course America's corporate media is recycling this misinformation for millions of nutrition ignorant people including doctors who, of course, do not receive any training whatsoever in clinical nutrition during their medical school and residency training. So the first question that popped into my mind when I read this article, again, which was published on April 18th, 2018, is why are they continuing to talk about a previously published study in January of 2018 in JAMA Cardiology, which I have already reviewed in video format. So here we are six weeks later and JAMA is still talking about a publication in one of their other journals. So the previous publication which they are referencing was published in January 2018 in JAMA Cardiology, which is supposedly one of their specialty journals. And as I commented in that video review, JAMA is notorious for publishing pro-drug and anti-nutrition articles. These big medical journals and organizations, of course, make multi-million dollar profits from their pro-drug stance. And of course, they have a massive inherent conflict of interest, contrary at times, many times, contrary to the science. In this case, one of the concerns that I have is that this kind of represents a form of dual publication. And what that means in this context is, in JAMA Cardiology, they published what is, in my opinion, a bad, a bad review, bad meta-analysis, and now they're recycling or kind of reprinting that same information over and over again. So medical journals, for example, are supposed to follow certain ethical guidelines, and these include avoiding unethical publications, redundant publications, and unreliable research. And number four, as you can see on my list, is plagiarism. So when JAMA Cardiology published this very poorly conducted meta-analysis, which I'll briefly review with you in just a moment, that could be considered unethical because the data was so unreliable in the way that it was reviewed that unreliable data at some point becomes unethical when it's so blatantly incompetent as that meta-analysis was. Now, as I've already mentioned with this, publication six weeks after the original publication, uh, one could state that this is a form of redundant publication because JAMA is rehashing and kind of getting more traction and more popularity by kind of rehashing a previous publication. So the way a publication should work is that the data gets published, let's, let's assume that it's good data, the data gets published and it kind of has its flash in the pan so to speak and then we move on to the next story. In this case, they're recycling the same story which was based on a bad meta-analysis and they're trying to get more traction out of it and trying to convince doctors that fish oil is of no clinical value based on a poorly conducted meta-analysis. So they're kind of recycling that same information, in this case, bad information, and that could be seen as a form of redundant publication. So yes, these are two separate publications, but they're recycling the same theme now so many times that one could consider that to be a form of redundant publication which is considered an ethical breach among scientific journals. And as if that weren't bad enough, what they've stated here in this brief review is that they are going to produce more studies using the same flawed methodology and of course they're going to conclude from that data that fish oil has no clinical value. What really has no value is bad research such as what they are publishing and then bad uh, commentary and editorial, such as this article here, written by a non-physician, which keeps recycling misinformation. So bad enough was publishing a poorly conducted meta-analysis. Equally bad, if not worse, is getting more traction and more publicity from a poorly conducted meta-analysis, which is what they're doing with this article here, six weeks after the original publication. So as I already mentioned, I did review the article published in JAMA Cardiology. The title of that article, as you can see here, is Associations of Omega-3 Fatty Acid Supplement Use with Cardiovascular Disease Risk. Supposedly, this was a meta-analysis of 10 trials 
involving approximately 78,000 individuals. So I did review this previously in video format. I encourage you to take a look at this. I reviewed some of my own experience publishing with JAMA and also reviewed in detail the information covered within their meta-analysis. And specifically, I kind of did a scholarly scrub of the article looking for errors, and of course it was loaded with errors. Error number one that I pointed out here is that they unjustifiably excluded very important data. Number two, as you can see here, they included several studies that employed non-therapeutic dosing. And I detail that here, looking at each and every of the studies that they concluded, seven out of 10 of which used non-therapeutic dosing and therefore basically had no chance at showing the efficacy of this intervention. Another very important point is that they completely ignored, in this meta-analysis published by University of Oxford, no less, they completely ignored what's called the omega-3 index. Now, the omega-3 index is the percentage in red blood cells of the omega-3 fatty acids of interest here, which are EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, and DHA, docosahexaenoic acid. What they completely ignored in this meta-analysis is any mention whatsoever of the omega-3 index, which has been well established to be the standard for evaluating the efficacy of fatty acid supplementation. So as I mentioned before, what we want to see a good optimal omega-3 index is approximately 10%, and that requires 1,800 milligrams per day of EPA and DHA. Of the studies that were included in this meta-analysis, only three out of 10 used a therapeutic dose of 1,800 milligrams per day, and you can see that in the information I provided from one of the tables from that article. And the question that I asked during the other review, which I encourage you to take a look at, is how on earth can a meta-analysis on omega-3 fatty acids and cardiovascular disease get published in a specialty cardiology journal in 2018 without any mention whatsoever of the omega-3 index? And I consider this to have been the intentional creation and propagation of nutritional ignorance. Furthermore, as you can see here, error number three is that they used unnatural forms of fatty acids. Error number four in this meta-analysis is that their conclusions are at odds with the data. If you actually look at the data presented in their article, they actually show benefit favoring treatment with omega-3 fatty acids of most of the studies. And you can see that here in figure one. You can see it here in figure three. It was also shown in figure two. Most of the studies showed benefit, but the news that made the headlines is that fatty acids were inefficacious, when in fact the data actually showed that the fatty acid supplementation was efficacious. Here, we're looking at figure number four. Again, we see favoring treatment in practically each of the studies, yet the headlines read that fatty acid supplementation was of no value, and that is contrary to the majority of studies published. It's also contrary to the data that they published within their own meta-analysis. So you can ask yourself, why would that be? And my answer, at least in part, is that nearly all medical schools and medical organizations are rabidly pro-pharma and pro-chem, and they lovingly accept money from drug and chemical companies, and they promote faculty that are pro-drug and anti-nutrition. Several of the authors of this study were also paid directly by drug companies. So when I look at that article, these are the critiques that I have. Problems with this publication include unjustified selective exclusion of data, inclusion of studies that employed sub or non-therapeutic dosing. This article took underdosing to the extreme and completely ignored a foundationally important advance in cardiology and science, and that is again the omega-3 index. Nine of the 10 studies used in this meta-analysis used the synthetic ester form of omega-3 fatty acids, and this is in contrast to the natural, easier to digest and absorb triglyceride form. The stated conclusions are at odds with the data, and the pro-pharma conflicts of interest among the authors and the publishing organization are also worthy of note. So when we look at this article, another nail in the coffin for fish oil supplements, I think that this is basically fake news. I think it's a disgrace and a disservice uh, to nutritional science and medical science in general because we as medical physicians, for example, need to know what is efficacious and non-efficacious. But publishing bad data and then repeating the headlines of that bad data again and again certainly doesn't serve anyone who wants to actually understand the science and treat their patients safely and with high levels of efficacy. 
And as I mentioned previously, this is not the first and only time that JAMA has done that. Also this year, we see a publication here, Vitamin and Mineral Supplements, What Clinicians Need to Know. This was published March 6 of 2018. And this is another example of a disservice to healthcare providers. First of all, does any sane and sober adult really think that JAMA is capable of reviewing, quote, what clinicians need to know, unquote, about vitamin and mineral supplements in two pages? I mean, does anybody really think that JAMA is going to be able to do that? So why would they even pretend to be able to review what's important to nutrition in two pages? Basically, what they're trying to do here is keep medical doctors who don't have any training in nutrition confused about nutrition. And so when doctors really want to understand nutrition, obviously, they have to look beyond their training. And for that purpose, I would recommend Alan Gaby's book, Nutritional Medicine. I would also recommend my book, Inflammation Mastery currently in the fourth edition. Both of these books are more than a thousand pages with several thousand citations. So in terms of what doctors really need to know about nutrition, I would recommend Alan Gaby's Nutritional Medicine and again, my book, Inflammation Mastery. This article, Vitamin and Mineral Supplements, What Clinicians Need to Know, I think is fake news and I think it's a disservice to any clinician who would read it. So that is my very quick summary of these two articles and I encourage you to not rely on Journal of the American Medical Association for your nutritional news.